Hello everyone, today we are starting a new series about all the women that are currently on death row in the US. Let's dive into it. Patricia Blackman, 20 years on death row in the state of Alabama. Blackman was found guilty of her adopted daughter's death. Dominiqua Bryant was just two years old. Patricia Blackman called emergency 911 on May 29, 1999 to request paramedics be sent to her trailer in Dothan. She reported that her child was not breathing to the 911 operator. Eddie Smith, a paramedic in Dothan, testified that when he got to Patricia Blackman's mobile home at around 9.30 p.m., he saw Dominiqua unresponsive and lying on the floor of the main bedroom. She was only wearing a diaper and blood-soaked socks. Her chest was covered in blood and she had a hematoma on her forehead. She was taken to Flowers Hospital emergency room after the paramedics tried to revive her. According to the evidence, Patricia adopted Dominiqua about nine months prior to her death. The father-in-law of Blackman, Wayne Johnson, testified that he saw Dominiqua playing and acting normally the night of her murder. He claimed that the little girl and Patricia left his home at around 8 p.m. Many objects found in Patricia Blackman's mobile home were covered in blood. A blood stain was found on a broken pool cue. They also found a child's t-shirt, a pink flat bed sheet, a comforter, and two napkins, according to the forensic testing. Tierra Capri Gobble 17 years on death row in the state of Alabama. Gobble was found guilty of the death of her four-month-old son, Phoenix Cody Parrish. Tierra Capri Gobble's first three children were allegedly taken from her by child services due to abuse, and her fourth kid was delivered to family members with the direction that Gobble be denied access. Well, the parents gave Tierra permission to take the baby, and when the child was just four months old, she beat him to death. Phoenix was brought to the emergency room of the Southeast Alabama Medical Center in Dothan on December 15, 2004. He had no pulse and was not breathing. When efforts to revive him were in vain, he was declared dead not long after being taken to the hospital. Phoenix's skull had been broken and the autopsy revealed that he had died as a result of bloodhead trauma. He also had several bruises on his face, head, neck and chest fractured ribs, a broken arm, fractures in both wrists, and a rip in the inside of his lips, consistent with a bottle being rammed into his mouth. The baby died because his mother could not get him to sleep and she lost her temper. Lisa Leanne Graham, seven years on death row in the state of Alabama. Lisa Graham was found guilty of hiring a family friend to kill her daughter Stephanie Shea Graham, who was 21 years old. According to the prosecution, Graham detested her daughter because she was a drug addict, a stripper, and likely a prostitute, and had left college. The fact that Shay and her husband often sided with the same position in disputes, which was tearing their marriage apart, led Graham to suspect that the two were having an affair. Stephanie was also charged with aggravated assault in connection with a drive-by shooting in 2007, and Graham was concerned that she might leave the country and avoid having to post a $100,000 bond. Graham contacted Walton, who is currently serving a life sentence after confessing to the murder, on July 7, and gave him her weapon. Shay was found by Walton at a gas station with some companions. Under the guise of providing her a ride out of state, he convinced her to get into his truck. After that, he took Shay to a rural road off of Highway 165, where she exited the vehicle to use the restroom. She was kneeling next to the truck when Walton pulled out a 9mm pistol and fired six shots, twice striking her in the head, leaving her body covered in bullets with her clothes still around her ankles. Heather Leval Keaton, seven years on death row in the state of Alabama. Leval Keaton was charged and convicted for the murder of her two stepchildren, three-year-old Chase de Blas and four-year-old Natalie de Blas in 2010. She committed these crimes together with her partner John de Blas, who was the father of the kids. Prosecutors claim that Natalie was duct taped, put in a suitcase, and left in a closet for 12 hours before she choked to death in March 2010. Later, her body was discarded close to Citronelle in a wooded area. 
Chase was strapped to a broom handle and left in the corner of the couple's bedroom overnight in June 2010, where he suffocated to death. His body was discovered in the wood. According to the prosecution, Leval Keaton was envious of Natalie and reacted angrily when Natalie was referred to as a princess by friends and relatives. When Chase asked about his little sister, he was murdered as well. Christy Michelle Scott 14 years on death row in the state of Alabama. Scott allegedly set her house on fire, killing her son, an autistic six years old, according to court records. Fire investigators concluded that her children's bedroom was where the deadly fire started. Scott may have been attempting to make a claim under the insurance coverage. The Scott home was set on fire in the early hours of August 16, 2008, and Mason perished as a result of this fire. He died from smoke in his airway and thermal burns, according to a pathologist with the Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences named Dr. Emily Ward. Christy Michelle Scott and her four-year-old son Noah were sleeping in Jeremy Scott's room. He is the husband of Christy and he had been away out of town for a few weeks. Mason was sleeping alone in the boy's bedroom. Samantha Allen, five years on death row in the state of Arizona. Police were called to Amy Deal's residence on July 12, 2011, where they discovered the girl dead from suffocation inside a small footlocker. Amy had been residing with her aunt and legal guardian, Cynthia Stoltzman, 44 years old, as well as her grandmother, Judith Deal. Cynthia's daughter and son-in-law were living in the same house, Samantha and John Allen. They were both 23 years old. That was not all, however. There were another 12 children living under the same roof. Since Amy was discovered to be very unclean and had bruises on her left leg from being forced into the trunk, the police suspected foul play. The family initially told the police that the night before, after the adults had gone to sleep, Amy was playing hide-and-seek and locked herself in the trunk. They all insisted that Amy was discovered dead the following day inside the trunk. However, Samantha and John Allen admitted to locking Amy in the trunk as punishment after being questioned about it. Amy had taken a popsicle without permission, and she was reportedly constantly hungry. Amy was only 11 years old. Wendy Andriano, 18 years on death row in the state of Arizona. The husband of Wendy Andriano had to stop working after developing a terrible illness. Wendy allegedly started frequenting bars and having extramarital affairs because she felt resentful of her obligations. She devised a plan to murder her spouse and make money from his passing as her unhappiness grew. In order to get a life insurance policy, she recruited her pals to pretend to be her spouse. She conducted studies on various poisons effects and covered ways to obtain them. Andriano placed a poison order and had it delivered to a different company. Despite Andriano's claims that her husband mistreated her physically and mentally, none of her acquaintances have ever seen any evidence of abuse. Andriano started sneaking her husband tablets of sodium azide. On October 8, 2000, Andriano called 911 in the early morning to report that her husband was experiencing a heart attack but when paramedics arrived, she turned them away. She contacted 911 once more after a few hours later to claim that she had beaten and stabbed him in self-defense. When emergency personnel came, they discovered Joe Andriano dead from multiple beatings and the neck stab wound. He was too weak from the chemotherapy and poisons to fight off Andriano, who hit him at least 20 times with a bar stool before stabbing him in the neck. Shauna Ford, 12 years on death row in the state of Arizona. By posing as law enforcement agents searching for fugitives, Shauna Ford and her companions were able to access the Flores residence. The suspects anticipated finding cash and drugs to be used to pay for Ford's Minuteman American Defense, MAD, a vigilante nativist organization that patrolled Arizona's border with Mexico. When they didn't find any drugs, the invaders seized some cheap jewelry and shot Raul Flores Jr., 29 years old, and his daughter, Brisenia Iliana Flores, 9 years old. They did not survive the attack. After being shot three times, Gina Gonzalez played dead and managed to escape. She was Raul's wife and Brisenia's mother. The two men that participated in the attack were also charged. Jason Bush received the death penalty, while Albert Gaxiola received a life sentence without parole. Rosie Alfaro, 
30 years on death row in the state of California. On July 14, 1992, Alfaro received a death sentence for the murder of a nine-year-old girl who was a victim of a June 15, 1990 robbery and break-in in Anaheim, California. The nine-year-old was stabbed 57 times by Alfaro, who was just 18 at the time of the crime, and she was expecting twins. The victim, Autumn Wallace, gave Alfaro permission to enter the house because she recognized her as a frequent visitor and a friend of her older sister. Alfaro arrived and requested permission to use the restroom inside, while Autumn was home alone, waiting for her sister and mother to get home from work. Alfaro had not anticipated finding someone at the Wallace home when she had planned to approach it. When she did, she understood that she had to get rid of Autumn since she would have known who had broken into the house. Alfaro stabbed Autumn 57 times before stealing anything that appeared to be valuable. Autumn's mother, Linda Wallace, discovered her daughter's body in the bathroom many hours later. Socorro Caro 20 years on death row in the state of California. Joey, 11 years old, Michael, 8 years old, and Christopher, 5 years old, were shot dead at their Camarillo home. The author of the crimes was none other than their mother, Socorro Caro, who felt like this was a good way to get revenge on her husband who was planning to leave her. Her one-year-old fourth child was uninjured. Caro also shot herself in the head, but she made a full recovery. During her trial, evidence was presented that her husband wanted a divorce because she was the abuser in their relationship, often turning to violence when arguing. She said she did not remember absolutely anything from the night of the crimes, which could be true considering she had brain surgery after the incident. She also tried to say that her husband was the one who committed the murders, but she could not prove this in court and later pled guilty by reasons of insanity. That is it for today, guys. I'll come back with part 2 on Wednesday. Until then, check out this video on the screen about all the people that are scheduled to be executed in 2023. See you next time. Bye-bye.